This is a limit cycle. It's a closed trajectory and snares the others into slowly but surely approach it. And indeed, it's a very mesmerizing thing to look at. But where this particular cycle comes from is what has really made me inspired to make this video. And that's because it's a mathematical representation of a CPU clock signal, but in the form of an engineered living organism. And all of that is encoded in its DNA. As the concentration of TET R rises, it is synced to the blinking of this bacteria. And if that doesn't sound cool to you, I don't know what will. This pattern of cycles and oscillations aren't unique to artificial organisms, though. When a cell divides, the timing of the events are controlled by various markers that repeat with time, very similar to how clock signals work for computers. I must confess, four years prior, I didn't really like biology. It was taught to me like a set of things to memorize and just know. Globs of flesh and unknown that really don't seem to have a pattern to them, unlike mathematics and engineering. But it's the takeaway from those two examples earlier that has led me down a deep fascination that I have with biology until this day. Biology is deeply mathematical, and we can understand and customize living things quite similarly to how we can understand and build computers from our knowledge of electrodynamics. So the next thing you may ask is that, well, why is life so similar to computers? And I'd argue that it comes from the fact that the building blocks of life have logic embedded into them. Very similar to how physics has mathematics as a whole integral part of it. Here's what I mean. Picture an arbitrary chemical reaction. You have two chemicals, A and B. They come together to form C. If you only have A, C couldn't be made since there's no B. Likewise, without A, C couldn't form either. And of course, the absence of both also results in C's absence. But wait. We've definitely seen this somewhere before. That's exactly what an AND gate is. Two inputs must be active in order to turn on the output. And what does this have to do with biology, you may ask? Well, living things are made of cells, and the parts of those cells are made from biomolecules that interact through a complex web of chemical reactions that make life possible. And each of those chemical reactions follow logical rules, much like what we've just seen. But to get from simple logical steps to ever-changing dynamical systems like our oscillator, we're going to have to know lots and lots of things. So this video is an announcement for a new series where we are going to be unlocking the secrets of biology from the unconventional perspective. Of mathematics. We won't be looking at just biological oscillations, but we will be looking at biological flash memory. How mega biological structures like the flagella are precisely timed and built, why certain biological control structures are more robust than others, and so many more in the next coming weeks and months. But for today's episode, I will be tackling what I feel is the most important thing in order to understand the rest of this juicy, exciting stuff. Its importance is so much so that it's known as the central dogma of biology. And that's because it is the process that describes how information flows within living things. And not only that, I'll also be describing this whole process using mathematics by the end of this video. So without further ado, let's get started. So continuing with our computer analogy, every cell has its own operating system. This operating system is known as its genome, and the media this genome is written upon is known as DNA. The genome contains genes, which contains the instructions for making proteins, little nanomachines that perform functions for the cell. For example, breaking down food, carrying around oxygen, replicating DNA, and pretty much everything else. 
But of course, just like in computers, you would not want to activate all the functionalities or proteins in this case at once. That wastes energy and processing capacity. Or worse, the interactions between the proteins can cause harm. So the DNA, like code, has its own syntax to indicate when to turn a gene on or off. When the gene is turned on, it is transcribed into a new type of material called RNA, specifically messenger RNA, because it sends a message from the DNA to the protein makers to make protein. This whole process of going from DNA to RNA to protein is known as the central dogma, though I am definitely leaving some details out, the fact that DNA can replicate itself and RNA can also reverse transcribe back into DNA. But that's for another time. The main gist of the central dogma is that it is the flow of information of life from DNA to RNA to protein. And to describe this using math is actually much simpler than you'd expect. There are two main processes at play here. The production of mRNA and the production of proteins. The rate of production of mRNA is going to be mainly affected by two things. As you can see in this animation, the base rate of production of mRNA when it's on, this is going to be zero when it's off, in this case it's on, minus the rate of decay of mRNA, which you would want to happen to a certain degree. When you no longer want a protein, you definitely want to stop sending the signals to make them. The more mRNA you have, means there's going to be more of it decaying, so the decay term is dependent on the mRNA's concentration. The rate of production of protein is also going to be affected by two things. More mRNA means more of the protein makers can attach itself to them, so more proteins will be made. And the more proteins there are, means the more decay is going to happen. So there you go. We can just shut this ordinary differential equation, which describes the basics of the central dogma into a numerical simulation, and we've got a nice simulation of the rates of protein production, which you can do yourself at home as well. And this is the groundwork for all of the exciting stuff to come. So there's all that and your biology basics. You now understood how information flows in living things. Next, we'll be tackling it how cells actually turn off and on protein productions in a robust and rapid manner. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.